welcome back. We're in Exodus 27. Let's finish the chapter. We're at verses 20 and 21. You shall charge the sons of Israel that they bring you clear oil of beaten olives for the light to make a lamp burn continually. In the tent of meeting outside the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his sons shall keep it in order from evening to morning before the Lord. It shall be a perpetual statute throughout their generations for the sons of Israel. So this is talking about the illumination of the sanctuary. There are lamps on uh, that they would light with olive oil. And so let's find out a little bit more about that. First of all, you noticed in the text that the oil had to be brought to Moses so that he could inspect its quality. Uh, just as today, olive oil quality is a question. It was a question then. There were many different kinds of oils there at that time, but olive oil is specified. Today, when we do an anointing, uh, I always use just pure virgin, you know, olive oil. So there is a special preparation of these olives. They're not done in the normal way. They are ground with a pistol and a mortar and so on in a special way. And then there they would be the resulting fluid oil would be strained carefully. And so it was a very pure oil that was used to burn in the lamps. Very pure, it produced less smoke and a brighter light. So, you know, when things are done, we turn off the lights, right? We turn off the lights at the church. Maybe we leave on a couple lights, you know, for safety purposes. Uh, but, but we turn off the lights. Uh, the sanctuary, God's, God was always home. God never slept. You and I, the humans, the priests, you know, we all sleep. God's never sleeping. God is always on the job. And so they always kept the seven-branch candlestick. They always kept that lit. It, it's, in, it's laid out in verse 21 here very definitely. It's, a, it's an absolute piece. It is a symbol. It, it does have meaning. That light is never to go out. It's to be kept burning all the time. The priests are charged to keep it burning, and they would light it, uh, make sure that it was had enough, the wicks were good, and the oil was good, and keep it burning all night long. So there was always light in the camp, in the center of the camp, in God's tabernacle, in the sanctuary, where God's presence was especially manifest, as befitting the fact that God was with them, God was dwelling with them, they were here at God's house, they were around his house, and God's presence was considered to be always there. And so the burning light showed that the lights were on, God is home, God's in business. God has a people and we're, we're doing the stuff that God tells us to do. One more question here that might come up to you and it come up to me, uh, where did they get the oil? Where did they get the olive oil? Did they go down to Costco and get it? Uh, you know, they must have brought some of the olive oil from Egypt, but out here in the wilderness, they wouldn't necessarily have any, any real uh, ability to grab oil. So another thing that might be that caravanners, uh, people traveling through uh, to the markets in Egypt and so on, back and forth, they might have gone out of their way to get some olive oil from those people. Olive oil was certainly a commodity that was traded in those days, and they had to have a fair supply of it to keep all the lamps burning. So, yeah, they got the oil somewhere. <laughs> Uh, that did not just uh, appear on the ground like the manna or something. That They had to go out and get it and find ways to continue, and apparently they did. So that'll be all for this chapter. Let's go on into chapter 28 tomorrow morning, and uh, we're going to look into shift gears just a little bit. Now we're going to look in terms of the garments that the priests wear and different things associated with that. You know, what's interesting, too, here is that... Um, we haven't really finished with all the furniture yet. Some of the sanctuary business is, is still to come. See you tomorrow morning.